If you want Christ to love you and help you, you must love him and always make every endeavor to please him. Do not waver in your purpose, because even if all the saints and every single creature were to abandon you, he will always be near you, no matter what your needs may be. Hello, my friends, and welcome to True Heroes. Today, we're going to talk about St. Cajetan, who was born at Vicenza in 1480 of pious and noble parents, and who was very dedicated to our Blessed Lady. And he himself was, in fact, dedicated to her at his birth. Let us begin his story. From childhood, he was already known as a saint, which seems to be a quasi common trend uh, among the saints, although obviously this is not always the case. He took the degree of doctor in canon and civil law at Padua and accepted a position in the court of Pope Julius II. On the death of that pope, he returned to Vincenza and disgusted his relatives by joining the confraternity of St. Jerome, whose members were always taken from the poor people. So they saw it as a kind of disgrace that he would lower himself to their level. And he spent his fortune in building hospitals and devoted himself to nursing the plague-stricken. He displayed such zeal for the salvation of his neighbor and for the sick that he was given the nickname the Hunter of Souls. To renew the lives of the clergy, to make them more pious, more holy, he instituted the first community of regular clerks known as the Theatines. They devoted themselves to preaching, the administration of the sacraments, and the careful performance of the church's rites and ceremonies. Clement VII approved the institution, and Cajetan made his solemn vows actually at the high altar of the Vatican Basilica, together with a certain John Peter Carafa, Bishop of Chieti, who later became Pope Paul IV. St. Cajetan was the first to introduce the 40 hours devotion of the Blessed Sacrament as an antidote to the heresy of Calvinism. He had a very tender love, as we said, for our Blessed Lady, and his piety was eventually rewarded, for one day on Christmas Eve, she appeared to him and placed the infant Jesus in his arms. When the Germans sacked Rome, St. Cajetan was barbarously scourged, to get from him the riches that he had already given to the poor. So they knew that he came from a rich and noble family and they assumed that he still had his riches. So they tortured him trying to get him to give them the location. And of course he had already given it all away. More than once he uh, foiled the plans of heretics he would prolong his prayers for up to eight hours without ceasing, and he was often wrapped in ecstasy and was famous for the gift of prophecy. When he was on his deathbed, resigned to the will of God, eager for pain to satisfy his love, and for death to attain to life, he beheld the Mother of God again, radiant with splendor and surrounded by ministering seraphim. So the angels were there with her. In profound, profound veneration, he said, quote, Lady, bless me. Mary replied, quote, Cajetan, receive the blessing of my son and know that I am here as a reward for the sincerity of your love and to lead you to paradise, unquote. She then exhorted him to patience in fighting an evil spirit who troubled him and gave orders to the choirs of angels to escort his soul in triumph to heaven. Then turning her countenance full of majesty and sweetness upon him, she said, quote, Cajetan, my son calls thee, let us go in peace, unquote. Worn out with toil and sickness, he went to his reward in 1547. Pope Clement X will enroll him among the saints. So from the life of St. Cajetan, let us have this devotion towards our neighbor. 
Let us do everything we can to lead them to God, to lead them on that road of salvation. This can be done by helping them to pray, by helping them to read spiritual books, uh, to visit the church, to receive the sacraments. These are all ways of leading souls to God, so let us take advantage of them. Tomorrow is the feast of St. John Mary Vienni, who was a very humble and poor priest who lived in a very remote village, but still managed to affect the whole world with his fame and his prayers and his holiness, so much so that famous nobles would come and visit this little village in order to consult with him. He was also very famous for his constant battles with the devil, which occurred very often, um, at times almost nightly. So until then, God bless you all, my friends. St. Cajetan, pray for us.